Multitude is a large number of or gathering of people, and the definition of infirmity is a physical or mental weakness. So as I go forth in the word, I want you all to uh, remember those two things, the word multitude and the word infirmity. Amen. And, you know, I want to uh, touch on my first point on tonight. Amen. It says when the Savior showed up, the situation shifted. So in this text, amen, the man at the pool we see was there so that he could be healed. Amen. He, he waited at the pool for 38 years yeah. for a special time of year where an angel would come and trouble the water and whoever stepped in first was healed. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in that 38 years, amen, he had 38 years of waiting, mm -hmm. 38 years of agony, yeah. 38 years of being in pain, uh -huh. 38 years of waiting, 38 years of watching others, amen, of watching others get the very thing that he was seeking. Amen. And he went through 38 years. But here's the thing. He never lost faith. He never lost hope. And, I, and, and what the Lord showed me is though he waited 38 years, he waited by that pool. He stayed in position. Amen. And, and, and some of us go through a, a, amen, a hard time where we don't know when our miracles come. We don't know when, when the Lord is going to show up for us. Amen. Some of us go through, uh, some of us may not have to wait 38 years for something. Amen. Because the Lord knows that some of us can't even wait 38 days. Amen. If it wasn't for, uh, if we had to wait 38 days, amen, we'd get ready to give up and throw in the towel. Amen. Then one day, the Savior showed up. And this man's life, he didn't know it, but this man's life and his situation was about to shift. Amen. His situation was about to change because Jesus stepped in. Amen. And for some of y'all, y'all may be going through something right now. Y'all may know, not know how you're going to make it out, but watch Jesus step in and turn it around for you. Amen. So some of us are like the man by the pool. We've waited for a long time for something from the Lord. Amen. We may not, we may be waiting for, you know, single folk. We may be waiting for a spouse. Amen. Somebody work a job. Amen. You may be waiting for a promotion. You might be waiting for a raise. Amen. You might be waiting for uh, a negative doctor's report to turn around. Amen. But we may be waiting for a turnaround in our finances. We may be waiting for a turnaround. Uh, and sometimes we may be waiting for so long. It's almost like, God, where are you? But God said, I'm right here. Amen. So your account may have been in the red so long. You don't even know when it'll ever go to the back to the black, amen. And we may have, you know, we may be in a situation, amen, where we've done all that we can do. But when Jesus shows up, the situation shifts. And I was saying, well, what, that's a lot to tell the people. What do you want to say? The Lord said, get ready for the shift, amen. And some of us need the Lord to breathe on our situation, amen. We, we sit around, we wait, amen. But sometimes we need God to do one of these numbers right here. We need Him to just breathe. Amen. We need him to just breathe on our situation. Breathe on that negative report. Breathe on that bank account. Because as he breathes, amen, things turn around. As he breathes on your situation, the breath brings restoration. As he breathes, it brings healing. As he breathes, he's blowing the winds of favor in your direction. Amen. One word from the Lord can change your situation. One word can reverse that negative doctor's report. One word can make everything all right. Amen. And you got to know when Jesus shows up, everything is all right. Amen. The man by the pool was waiting for a specific time to be healed. Amen. And some of us are waiting for a specific time to be healed. Some of us are waiting for a specific time for our turnaround. We're waiting for everything to turn around and line up in our life before we come to God. But the Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And sit up and he is here right now. He is near now. So we've got to call upon him now. Amen. And, and, and the thing is, some of us are waiting for a special event. And, and, and I, as much as I love church, amen, some of us are waiting on a special event like a convention. We might be waiting on a convocation to, to go before the masses so that we can be healed, so that we can receive what it is that God has for us. But let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, amen. The Lord does not need a special time. He does not need a, a, a special event to heal you. He doesn't need a special time to turn around your situation. Amen. He doesn't need a special doctor to operate on you. Amen. Preferably that doctor knows what he's doing. Amen. But God knows what he's doing in spite of. Amen. And, and, and he doesn't need a special time to do it for you. Because he said, I'm getting ready to do it for you. I'm getting ready to shift your situation. Amen. And all the Lord needs, though, is your unwavering faith to know that he's going to do it for you. Amen. He's going to heal your heart. 
Amen. He's going to regulate your mind. Amen. He's going to make that doctor's report go from, oh, it's terminal to, oh, it's just a test. Why? Because this too shall pass. Amen. All the Lord needs is your unwavering faith. Amen. The Lord does not need a specific time to come through for you, but you got to know that he will come through for you on time. Amen. I want to go back to verses 6 through 8. And the Bible reads, when Jesus saw him lying there and he knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? He said, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him. He said, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool. When the water is stirred up while I am going, another steps down before me. Yes. Jesus said unto him, get up, take up your bed and walk. Amen. Amen. And through all this and through all the man's waiting, here's what I learned from that. And through all the man's waiting, he did not lose hope. Yes. He yes. did not waver. Yes. He did not complain. Yes. Amen. His situation yes. said yes. that I'm over here and I don't know what's going to happen. But his faith said that I know that my turnaround is right around the corner. Amen. And, and he said, if God can do it for them, then he can do it for me. And we've got to establish that mindset, people of God. When, when we see somebody else getting blessed, when we see somebody else getting something before us, when we see somebody getting elevated, if God can do it for them, I know he can do it for me. Amen. But know this. If God blessed them, the same God that blessed them, if we serve in the same God, then the same God can do the same for you. He never runs out of blessings. He, the Bible says he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Amen. And, and here's the thing, uh, which brings me to my next point, amen. It says, when you're waiting, wait in expectation. Amen. I want to go back to verses 7 through 9. The Bible reads, when the sick man answered him, he said, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up and while I'm going down another steps before me. Jesus said unto him, get up, take up your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed and he took up his bed and walked. And now the day was the Sabbath. Now here's the thing. If you're waiting on a turnaround in your situation, people of God, it will not come from your friends. So that's another thing. You've got to really watch who you connect yourself to. You've got to watch who you hang around. You've got to watch who you spend time with. Amen. You've got to spend more time with God. You've got to love God more than anything in this world. You've got to love God more than your job. You've got to love God more than your family. Amen. You've got to love God more than anything. It is written. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen. So here's the thing. If you're waiting for a specific turnaround, watch who you hang around. Amen. It will not come from your family, but that turnaround will come from the Lord. You may need some things from God right now. Amen. Sometimes the reason why it has it's taken so long for that thing to happen, for that shift to take place, is because you're putting your hope and your reliance Amen. In the wrong things and in the wrong people. When your hope and your reliance should be in God. Your hope and reliance should be that I know that the Lord will make a way. Amen. Somehow. Amen. Your hope and reliance doesn't rely on your job. Your hope and reliance lies in the Lord. Because when your bank account is less than the month, than the days that you have in the month, you've got to know that God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. You waiting on others to heal you. Amen. You waiting on others. Now, I'm, now I'm not against this. I, I, I am totally for it. Amen. Uh, you, you pray in the prayer of agreement with your brothers and sisters. But sometimes when your brothers and sisters are not available, sometimes when your brothers and sisters are, don't answer the phone, sometimes when your mama don't answer the phone, you've got to know how to pray for yourself. You've got to know how to encourage yourself. Amen. Sometimes when I pass Vincent is a wonderful leader, amen. But sometimes when he's not available, you have got to know how to pray for yourself, amen. And, and sometimes, and then you're, you're waiting on your pastor to uh, lay hands on you. You're waiting to, uh, you, you may be waiting for, you know, those of y'all that take medicine, amen. You may be waiting on a refill of your prescription. Those things are great. And absolutely, those things are in order, amen. Let's uh, rise as our superintendent comes in, amen. Uh, you may be waiting on your refill your prescription, but those things are great. They're in order. However, you can do all those things. But here's the thing. If you don't have faith, 
If you don't have faith that God is going to come through for you, those things ain't going to work. Amen. Amen. If you look in the Bible, let's go to the scripture. If you look in Luke chapter 8, the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. Twelve years she struggled with the same disease. Twelve years she was going through the same thing. She spent all her resources, amen, or, or, or she spent all her resources, amen, to try to see the best doctors, to see the best physicians, and nobody could heal her. So when she ran out of resources, then Jesus stepped in. When you've done all that you can do, Jesus steps in and he does all that he can do. Amen. So here's the thing. When she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, amen, she knew that she would be made whole. Now here's the thing. She had the faith to know that she would be made whole. So even though she had the faith, her touching the hem was not just that. Her touching the hem was the activation of the faith that she already had. Because the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Amen. Her touching the hem was all she needed to do to activate it. Because she had already had the faith down on the inside. And according to her faith, it was done unto her. And I want to remind you tonight, Senator Faith, that according to your faith, whatever you need from God, it is so. Amen. And while we wait on the healing, while we wait on deliverance, you know, and it's good to wait on you, but why wait for somebody to do that for you when you serve the same God and he can do it for you? You've got to have the faith. Amen. And, and, and here's the thing. What am I saying? I'm saying that sometimes... When, when those are, that are busy are supposed to be praying for you, when they're busy, they're not available, sometimes you've got to pray and you've got to press through, yeah. even when nobody is watching. Yeah. Amen. Don't wait. And, and, and yeah. here's the thing. Don't wait for the service. Wait for the Savior. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. when, your sit, when your situation shifts, yeah. amen, when the Savior steps in and turns it around for you, you'll know that it was nobody that, yeah. but him that did it. It was nobody but him that paid my bills. It was nobody but him that brought me through. It was nobody but him that allowed me to not lose my mind. It was nobody but him that took me off the street. It was nobody but him that took me out the front house. Amen. And, and it brings me to uh, uh, the, uh, my favorite scripture, amen, Isaiah 40 and 31. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And I want to ask you a question. Amen. How many of you need something from the Lord on tonight? Amen. Amen. And just wait on it because if you wait, it's on the way. Amen. And if you wait in expectation, you have nothing to worry about. Amen. Amen. One word from the Lord turns it around. And you've got to remember this no matter what you're going through. Amen. God has the final say. Amen. No matter what the situation looks like, no matter what the bank says, no matter what the loan uh, officer says, no matter what the doctor says, no matter what the judge says, God has the final say. The songwriter said, who has the final say? And we said, Jehovah has the final say. We're a call and response church. Amen. So this, it, they went on to say, I have no reason to fear because the Lord is my life. And Brother David said, the Lord is my life and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Amen. When we walk with God, the doctor may say that it's terminal, but God has the final say. When you may be waiting for decades on a promise, amen, but God has the final say, amen. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think, amen. The Lord, when the Lord fixes it for you, it will happen in a way, again, that you won't even know how it happened. You won't know when it happened. It'll just happen like that. And all you've got to say is just thank you, Jesus, and just keep on pressing forward, amen. One word from the Lord can turn your situation around. One word can make it all better. Amen. Jesus spoke into this man's situation. And for some of y'all, y'all need God to speak into your situation. You need God to speak into your circumstance. Amen. One word can cause that financial breakthrough to happen. One word can cause the sickness to cease. One word can cause your cancer to go into remission. One word can bring light to that situation that you thought was dead. But God said, behold, I shall do a new thing. And now it shall spring forth. He said, I will make uh, ways in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. One word can make your child come back home. One word can heal your broken marriage. One word can uh, heal your broken heart. One word can renew your mind. One word can turn your whole life from upside down to right side up. Amen. And when God has spoken, it will happen. Amen. When God fixes it, he promised that if you kept your mind stayed on him, he said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. Amen. That shalom peace. That peace that surpassed all understanding. When everything looks chaotic around you, when it looks like you're going down,
down. God will not let you go down. Amen. God will keep you right. Sometimes you think God will keep you right there because he wants to teach you something sometimes. Amen. Amen. Sometimes he wants to teach us something. Amen. We just got to be teachable. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So going back to that shalom, peace that surpasses all understanding, when everything is not going to rock, uh, right around me, I've got to know that God is the answer. Yeah. Amen. How do you, and you say, well, how do you know that he'll keep me in perfect peace? How do you know that one word can turn it around? Because God sent his son Jesus yeah. down through 42 generations to die for the sins of the world. Amen. He turned the situation around for us when they nailed his hands. He turned the situation around for us when they nailed his feet. He turned the situation around for us when they pierced him in the side. They whipped him all night long. They spat on him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. But he never said a mumbling word. Amen. He never said a mumbling word. He died a death that he did not deserve. He paid a price that he did not owe for you and I. Amen. And, and here's the thing. They put him in a bar too. Amen. But on the third day. Amen. Somebody say third day. He got up with all power in his hand. Amen. And not only that, he went back into heaven. He said, uh, over in John 14, I believe the Bible says, uh, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, I will come back and receive you unto myself. So all we've got to do is wait because the miracle is on the way. And I don't know about y'all, but when it's all said and done, I want to hear the Lord say, well done. Good and faithful servant. And those of you that know the words of prayer, please pray for me.